Come one, come all, and welcome to week two of Words About Books, Dark Carnival. We have such sights to show you. Black Parades, The Amazing Mr. Electro, two boys who just don't know when to quit. And last but not least, the world's most punchable man. I am your ringleader, the enigmatic Mr. Ben. And I am joined, as always, by my partner, the incorrigible Mr. Nate. When last we left our heroes, young William had unwisely murdered a balloon in cold blood. Jim lay asleep, unaware of his comrade's foolish hijinks. Our tale resumes the following morn as they awake to what they have done. They also murdered Mr. Cougar, but Mr. Cougar is then brought back to life. Yeah, nobody nobody seems... People seem much more upset about the balloon. Yes. Going to be real with you. So I saw your script, and I think you actually have an error, because they do not both have this dream. Oh, they don't? I thought they no. both had the dream. I think it's only Jim had the dream. And as Will's hearing about the dream, he's like, oh. That's bad for us. So Jim has a dream that a band called My Chemical Romance will one day exist and that they will have an album called The Black Parade. And there will be this music video where like 40 people in dark marching band costumes are are leading a a huge coffin through town in a in a crude mockery of a parade that that is like death. And in this giant 40 foot coffin is laid out this deflated well something like that and and will's like a a balloon he's like yeah that's it it's a balloon why did they put a balloon in the coffin and and will's like yeah jim last night i and jim's like and and the weird thing was like all the carnies were like really pissed off now (laughs) isn't that a strange dream i had will and will's like oh geez (laughs) yeah and yeah then I don't think Will ever does get around to telling Jim that he murdered the balloon. Yeah, because they run into Miss Foley. That's right, yeah. Miss Foley, she decided that that carousel was where it was at, and she's now a little kid. She's she's definitely unhinged. Oh, yeah. She, she has become a little kid, and she knows she can't, like, okay, what do you do now? You're a little kid. Nobody's going to believe, like, you own a house. Nobody's going to let you teach school. Well, you can't teach school, but you can go play stickball. <laughs> you can play stickball, but nobody's going to call you for dinner because your parents are probably old and or dead because you were a, you were like a 40-year-old woman. You have to call yourself for dinner. Yeah, with that money you don't have. Well, it, it wasn't what she expected it would be, and she just she's breaking down in tears. And Will's like, we got to help her. And Jim's like, nope, get the hell out of here. Let's go. Run away. But then they hear the, the, the sweet notes of. And they know the Black Parade is coming. Yeah. And then she's gone, presumably because the carnival gets her. And we never hear from her again. Uh... The Black Parade starts coming through town. And it's all the carnies. And. Will and Jim know that this is just a an excuse to search the town for Will and Jim. Because now the Carnies are out for blood. <gasps> and we'll cut to Mr. Holloway, Jim's father's perspective, also known as Charles. I can't remember if we've been consistently calling him one or the other. I don't know that the book consistently calls him one or the other. No. No, it doesn't. We cut to him, and he's watching this weird parade come through town. And... <laughs> I forget how he notices, but he's standing over this like storm drain sewer grate. He drops something on the ground and he bends over to pick it up. He's like, what? What, what is all this? Yeah. And it's Jim and Will are sitting below the sewer grate hiding. in. And I point this out. Will's idea. We're going to hide in plain sight. We're going to get really close to them because that's the last thing anyone would expect. And like, tons of people see them. A kid sees them. 
a dwarf from the carnival sees them. Will's father sees them. Yeah. Mr. Dark almost sees them. Yeah, if it weren't for Will's father having a weird macho interaction with Mr. Dark. So Mr. Dark <laughs> knows their names now. He knows just their first names. That's apparently he, important. Yeah, and he has a picture of them. He's got he's got tattoos of them. No, he's, he's got a picture of them riding something or something. I thought he had tattoos of them on his he, palms. Yeah, he does, but he's not showing people the tattoos. He should. They're good <laughs> art. We find out that when he tattoos somebody on his body, he gets some weird like voodoo power over them. As he squeezes his palms, like he makes fists that have Jim and Will's face on them, it, it causes Jim and Will pain. And he's doing that, and they're almost about to cry out. And Will's dad's having this interaction with him. And he's like, have you seen these two boys? And Will's dad is like, oh, yeah, those are these two kids. They moved to Michigan last week. You missed them. Sorry. And Mr. Dark's like, you're lying. I know you're lying. Why are you lying? And and he's like, why are you so eager? Why, why would I lie if these kids are going to get to ride every carnival ride for free, sir. How dare you accuse me of such things? Why would I not tell you the, their names? And why are you so interested in them? Mm. Then I, Mr. Dark, motion for the blind witch to come over. And I, Charles Holloway, start smoking <laughs> as hard as I can. <laughs> and the witch... The witch is like, oh, God. <laughs> and then Mr. Dark is like, stop doing that. And then he, he blows smoke directly into her face. Doing what? What's your name, buddy? I'm Charles Holloway. I work at the library. Come on down sometime. We'll hang out. We'll talk books. I squeeze my pecs so they do that dancing thing. And I'm like, <laughs> I think I will. I think I will come to the library. I'm very interested in... Uh, opening a book and reading it and then charles is like and i'll never see him again i'm sure now that he knows where i work and what my name is i'm gonna kick your ass tonight buddy <laughs> and he, mr dark storms off back into the crowd and the dwarf uh who was the lightning rod salesman which i think is his like literal name that whole sentence is hyphenated like dwarf who was the <laughs> lightning rod salesman um it's like artist formerly known as prince yeah, and, and they, they keep using the word dwarf, but I, I don't think he looks like an actual little person. He looks like somebody who is like Gimli. basically crushed in a vice. Oh, yeah, that's probably it. Yeah, he, he looks like somebody just destroyed his body. Because he's a freak. Well, he's part of the freak show now. Because it turns out that the... Uh... Most beautiful woman ever has thighs of steel. Oh, God. What was that James Bond villain? Something on a <laughs> top. Senya on a top? Yeah. Yeah. That's what that made me think of. <laughs> 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 oh, God. So he's, the dwarf sees them, and he has like a photographic memory, but he's also insane. And so he's like walking, like he sees them and he, he makes a mental note. It's described as a photograph. I don't think he actually has camera lens eyes, but that's how they perceive it. Right. And so he, he makes like a mental note that he has found these kids and then he wanders off because he's <laughs> insane. Right. And then like 30 minutes later, he finds Mr. Dark and he's like, oh yeah, by the way, I found those two kids you were looking for. They're in this great. And Mr. Dark like howls in fury, runs back to the grate, drops to his knees when he sees the kids aren't there anymore, smashes the ground with his fist and is like, <laughs> no, <laughs> he's very dramatic, Mr. Dark. Well, his name is Mr. Dark, so he never had a chance. You know, Jim's name is Nightshade, so. Well, yeah, that comes. God, play what later. is that Pokemon move? Night Nightshade. something. Is it Nightshade? It is Nightshade. Oh, my God. <laughs> So, just to briefly recap before we move into the third act, so you definitely know where all the characters are. Mr. Dark is now searching the town for Will and Jim. Will's father knows that Will and Jim are hiding from them, and he has given them instructions to meet him at the library at 7 o'clock tonight. But in the meantime, just stay out of sight. 
Yeah, don't hide in that grate that you're hiding in right now. Everyone has seen you. Will's father then insulted Mr. Dark's mother and dared Mr. Dark to fight him. <laughs> they, flex they flexed at each other. <laughs> then gave him his personal address and <laughs> told him where he would be tonight when no one else was around. <laughs> And Mr. Dark said, see you there. Now, important to refresh your memory here. Mr. Dark is a tattooed, muscled badass. And <laughs> Will's dad is a janitor at a library who hasn't slept in five years. <laughs> it's the battle of the ages. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's where we find our heroes? Question mark? <laughs> So Charles Holloway is doing a good old fashioned horror movie looking up the bad guy thing. It's it's time for act three. It's time to, to bring this to a close. We're going to find out what we're dealing with and how to beat it. Yeah. What do you think about this trope of let's go to the library and let's read up on what this is? It's always lame, but I don't <laughs> hate it. Oh, this is a bagul. That's bad. That was the, the Skype red, call. The red letter media. This is a bagul. <laughs> I actually have a bone to pick with that. So <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I've got to derail the conversation so early. <laughs> Somebody sent me a study uh, analyzing based on heart rate change over the course of watching a movie, what the scariest movie of like all time was. And it was and porn. <laughs> it was sinister. <laughs> and you can bite me whoever did that study and published it you should be ashamed of yourselves you should quit science and you should <laughs> never ever m put the word horror in your mouth again if you came to the conclusion that sinister was the scariest movie of all time you should have known your methods were flawed right then and there now is their heart rate elevated because it was funny because it could because be. I don't know. It's a bagul. <laughs> I assume it was elevated because the, like jump scares or something. But like, what does that prove? Like, is bungee jumping then the scariest activity of all time? No, like, that'd be skydiving. Yeah. Well, it's like there's you. For, that's a stupid method for measuring <laughs> it. That's a stupid method. And second. Strap a heart rate monitor onto me, scientists, and I'll prove you wrong. And that's not the first time I've said that. Actually, I was thinking about that. We w we want to do a Halloween stream. So how do we how can we get a heart rate monitor in there? I got a Fitbit. Yeah, but it'd have to be somehow synced to the stream, right? Yeah, that's a toughie. I don't know how we'd do that. You're is there a way to stream my my vital signs? <laughs> there is a way because speedrunners do it all the time. Oh shit! We'll have to look into that. Maybe, maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll strap me up all right so they're at the li they're at the library charles spent the day researching the carnival watching the carnival getting newspaper clips on how the carnival has been coming here for the last like 100 years every like 30 years or so it'd show up do some shady things and then disappear which let me say they say it's like it always shows up in october every 30 years just enough time for everyone to forget it but like I didn't get the vibe that this was the kind of town that people leave. I didn't get the vibe that this is a town where you wouldn't just know everyone here. Yeah. So if a carnival came 30 years ago and like people disappeared, you'd probably be like, huh, that was that was weird. And now there's another carnival that's similar. I couldn't really tell what the deal was because it seemed to me like Jim and Will know everybody on Main Street and there's like four to five shops on Main Street and a library and Jim and Will's houses and that's the extent of this town. But then later it's mentioned that there's like 400 people at the carnival and I was like, I didn't even know this town had 400 people. I can't imagine where they are or what they do. So I don't yeah. really know. I, I'm kind of just going along for the ride, but I did think it was kind of silly that like it comes every 30 years and kills a bunch of people and nobody remembers that because it's like, oh, it's been 30 years. It's like, okay, it, it it's, it's olden times. Like what else do you people talk about? That carnival that came 30 years ago and killed my father. I mean, <laughs> there's going to be at least one guy who's like, I remember a carnival coming through here. Cougar and Dark. Yeah, yeah, that was the one. Yes, they killed my brother. They turned him into a banana. 
<laughs> yeah. You'd think somebody would remember this because like you'd think somebody would remember just like the specific carnies. I don't know. Anyway, I don't care. So he finds out that there's a carnival. <laughs> okay. It, yeah. It comes so, through every 30 years, kills people. Ir- weirdly <sighs> enough, this information doesn't really help them. They're like, yeah, turns out we're, we're facing a force of like overwhelming evil that has lasted throughout time. Uh, no, they have this. Your ag- thoughts on they how have we this. Win? Agatha Christie parlor scene where Will's dad explains this to two 13 year olds and he does it in the most like lit major philosophical rambling way. Nobody can follow Nobody, including me can follow anything he's saying. <laughs> yeah. And I was kind of in that same boat. And, and he's what? like, he's like, yes, yes. It's, it's like how we all thrive on gossip. Well, he says specifically women thrive on gossip, but yes. trust me, men do too. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, folk. he's like, yes, other people's misery sustains us, gives us entertainment. The carnival is something like that. The carnival is like a, a giant woman. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't a woman be more like boys? <laughs> It only works, though, if you're alone and sad. <laughs> <laughs> but the carnival, it, it feeds on our misery. It, it sustains itself by our negative emotions. I think, I think we need to arm ourselves with knowledge. <laughs> and, and Jim's like, maybe arm ourselves with weapons. No, no, Will. <laughs> knowledge. Knowledge is what we need to win this fight. Yes. The, the, this is a thematic battle, Jim. I know that you think that themes are for fourth grade book reports, but guns are not going to win our war. Yeah, we're not going to win this with violence. We're going to win this by overcoming our negative emotions, by learning to accept ourselves for who we are and not wishing to change our natural fate. We need contentment, Jim. We need to accept our situation. And then the illustrated man comes in and beats his ass. Yeah. And it turns out that actually it might have been good to arm yourself with both knowledge and weapons. Yes. Because the illustrated man comes in, grabs Will's dad. Will's dad tries to punch him. He's weak. And the illustrated man grabs his wrist, breaks his hand, and then leaves him on the ground. Yeah, I, I imagine uh, Mr. Dark as... Frieza at that point he just catches the punch and just squeezes until all the bones are shattered yeah he's just a much stronger man and and <laughs> Will's dad has like a bible in his hand and Mr. Dark's like ha! <laughs> are you serious that's your plan he literally, he literally grabs the bible and throws it in the trash and he and then beats the crap out of him yeah. and it's like it, the themes are important he's not wrong but like also it helps to not just get beaten up by a big dude. <laughs> like it, it turns out that's also going to be a factor in this fight is that like you need to be able to at least not get punched in the face and knocked down because that's also a, a weapon in, in their arsenal of, uh, of tricks and, and emotional manipulations is like sometimes they can also just kick your ass. <laughs> And like oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna point out here, it's not like he has super strength or anything. Will's dad is just a 54 year old man who has not exercised in 30 years. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. The illustrated man is a carny who repairs machinery and does heavy lifting all day. So, eh. <laughs> <laughs> so Will's dad goes down in about five seconds. Well, well, Mr. Dark does try to tempt. Will's dad, because uh, the boy's hide, and he's like, if you tell me where they are, I'll take some years off your life. And he resists that successfully, so Mr. Dark is like, all right. <laughs> he just kicks his ass. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, he successfully resists the temptation. That is a big character moment for Will's dad, uh, because... You know, it, it seemed like at the beginning of the story, maybe Will's dad would have sold out Will and Jim for a chance at a second youth. But now he's accepting his role as a father, and he knows that his purpose now is to protect Will, and to a lesser extent, Jim. 
<laughs> to a far lesser extent. Jim's kind of a jerk, so, you know. No, it's just, you know, like, Jim's mom could do some of the heavy lifting here. <laughs> like, it, he is prioritizing his child. <laughs> so, I think that's fair. Um, Will's, Will's dad is, is trying to become a parent to two boys. Jim, do you want me to just adopt you? I mean, we practically have. If, if you ever move or I move, uh, it's going to be really awkward. Yeah, if anything, just run away and join us. I mean, Mr. Dark's going through the library stacks looking for these kids, and he's trying to tempt Jim. He's trying to tempt Jim and threaten Will. Yes. He's like, hey, I don't know. Mr. Cougar might not survive. What do you think about it? Dark and nightshade? Got a nice ring to it. Maybe you could be my new partner. We'll put you on that carousel, maybe age you up to a nice strong 25. How does that sound, Jim? And then Will uh, will turn you into a baby that the dwarf can hold. You, you big baby. Yeah, and he's also he he thre- he says like, Will, your mom rode the carousel. She she saw what she had become. She looked in the mirror and she screamed at what she became, and that causes Will to start sobbing like a bitch and leading and, Dark directly to them. And Will's dad is like maybe having some kind of heart attack at this point. Um. I don't think so, actually. I, I can't tell. Will's dad is on the ground, like, holding his shattered hand, going like, Oh, don't fall for it, Will. Oh. <laughs> and oh, and Mr. Dark says that the Dust Witch can deal with his heart and make him seem like he died of a heart attack. And yeah. uh, that's that's what he does. After he grabs the kids, their moms are just walking down the street. There's nothing wrong with them. I mean, like, on the outside. Jim's mom's still a f- nut job he's like i really hope they see us here in this window and then they come rushing to the library to save you because i'll let them in will and jim i'll let them in this library oh they no they they walked away they didn't see you that's kind of anticlimactic well time to go and so they use magic invisible needle and thread to sew their eyes shut their ears shut and their mouths shut Uh, you are mr dark and you're grabbing me will okay (laughs) all right let me just get into my <clears throat> my persona. All right. Come here, kid. <laughs> no. No, you'll never take me alive. I, I'm grabbing you by the hair now. And I'm just lifting you up by your hair. Uh, you know what? You know what, Mr. Dark? There's just there's just one thing I want to say to you. Yeah, what's that? Br- bring me in closer. I, I just I just need to I, I need to whisper it in your ear. Uh, I I I definitely trust where this is going. I'm I'm going to lean in closer. That balloon went down like a bitch. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I, I cannot wait. I'm torturing you for eternity. You know what? And then I spit in your face. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> We're going to make a new balloon. We're going to make it out of human skin, Will. You don't have the grapes. <laughs> Gee willikers. <laughs> then he's like, all right, Dust Witch. I'm, I'm a Bond villain. Charles Holloway, well, he's not quite James Bond, but he's the closest thing we've got. I'm going to leave you alone here to finish him off. I'm just going to assume that you've got this under control. We're, we're going now. Bye. And of course, she does not have everything under control because she goes to slow his heart rate. He's like, God damn, just finish it off. I, I can't go on. My hand's shattered. She's like, all right, just go to sleep. Just go to sleep. Your heart's getting slow. You're starting to go to sleep. He's like... Because <laughs> for some reason, as he's facing down death, he just finds it hilarious. And she's like, no, you're, you're sleeping. Stop laughing at me. And she, she's like physically harmed by the laughter. She runs away. I didn't really get what was going on in that scene. She can't handle joy and laughter. Are people not laughing at this carnival all the time? And maybe also mocking her powers, I guess. Well, I, I got the vibe that that was more it. That like... No, I can make your heart slow down. Stop it. Well, I think it was more like if you have this like darkness in your heart, the carnival magic works on you. And if you don't, it doesn't. Because there are a bunch of people who attend this carnival who are just fine. Hundreds. I'd say 99% of the people attending this carnival are fine but for the small subset of people who have some like insecurity or yeah, some there's, wish there's a quote from futurama about santa claus where bender's like hey well i don't believe in santa claus come on everyone if you don't believe in him he can't hurt you and then he's just the shit kicked out of him 
<laughs> well, if you don't believe in them, they can still punch you in the face. <laughs> but the witch powers aren't going to work. And the witch is not a Chad like Mr. Dark. She's A, she's no. a woman, which in Ray Bradbury land. Uh... She's a Becky. <laughs> she's not a Stacy. <laughs> is that who it is? Stacy yeah. and Chad? Stacy and Chad and then the Virgin <laughs> and Becky. Stacy and Chad. Oh, God. All right. What else do we need to say about this scene? Or, or should we go on to the part where uh, we go to the bullet trick? Go to the bullet trick. So. Well, he turns, he totally immobilizes them, turns them into wax dummies. I don't know if we mentioned that. Yeah. Yeah. And he controls what they say because they're walking through town. They're like, go to the carnival. Ha, ha, ha. Fun for all. It's like, good job, boys. I'm going to put you in this wax museum. You're going to sit there. Well, I do this bullet trick with the witch. Yeah, it's very important we do the final act. <laughs> it's very important. And he's like, I presume that you've uh, handled the situation. She's like, no. He's like, God damn you. Well, we're, we're still going to do the trick. All right. She's like, I- no, I don't, I don't feel good about this. And then he, he pinches her tattoo on his body. And that's when we realize, like, that's uh, all the carnival freaks are tattoos on the illustrated man's body they're like souls he's collected and yeah, that's how you're he gonna run out them. of skin right i think the like his uh his tattoos like shift and move Probably shift yeah yeah they're like magic so so the witch is brought to heal and he's like i need a volunteer to shoot the witch and no one volunteers but then suddenly as he's like well no one volunteers guess we're not doing the act after all I'll volunteer. <laughs> yes. And the crowd parts like the Red Sea. And they it's, show... It's me, Mr. Charles Holloway. Chad Charles Holloway. <laughs> Standing there with my left hand bandaged to my <laughs> chest and my right giving you the finger. All right. Uh, well, you can't do it with a broken hand. Ha! Gotcha! I only need one hand to shoot this witch. Isn't that right, crowd? Cheers. Cheers. There's all these cheers. Yes. I'm, I'm upstaging you, illustrated man. You son of a bitch. Fine. I'm going to throw this rifle at, at your face. I duck and catch it like a bamf. Oh, my God. Oh, God. He's got the crowd on his side. Ah, but well. you know you know who I need? You know who I need to help me with this shot? My I son, swear to God, if you say Will. boy. Oh, God damn it. My son, Will. <laughs> Will, Will, you're out there somewhere. He's out there in the crowd. Let's let's make some noise. Let's let's get Will out here. Come on, guys. Come Will. on. <laughs> They're cheering. Will. I'm upstaging Will. you. Do you, and, do you like and, this? And now I'm like, wait, wait a minute. He said he only needed one hand to fire this right. He he needs a volunteer to help. Him. He's contradicting himself. This son of a bitch. He's upstaging <laughs> Con- me. Continuity doesn't matter in the circus. The crowd's loving it. Shut up. Shut up. You're you're bringing them down, illustrated man. Ah, oh, yes, guys, laugh, laugh, love me, love me. I, you know what? It, I, I might do. I, can I try out my type five on you? No, no. Okay, no. Will, Will, come on up, come on. And so uh, Will, Will's, Will's coming to the stage. I'm, I'm squeezing. Right. I'm squeezing my hand with with Will's face on. Bastard, I'm getting him. <laughs> Don't worry about him, Will. He's kind of a pushover. Isn't that right, Crowd? Come on, come on. Laugh, laugh, laugh. Don't, don't his tattoos look stupid? How dare you? All right, fine. <laughs> Here, put your stupid initials on this bullet. I assume that nothing bad is going to happen. And I make a slight crescent moon shape. A crescent moon? What, what could that mean? All right, yeah. Here, here's, your, here's your bullet back. It's definitely the same bullet. Don't look at it. I'm going to put it in the cartridge. Bam, it's in, it's in your gun. All right. Now, from everything I know from years spent at the library just reading late into the night any random book that I come across, I know that the bullet trick is actually done by swapping the bullets. The real one will go to the witch, she'll hide it in her mouth and then pretend to catch it, whereas he has inserted some kind of wax bullet into my gun, and that bullet will evaporate as wax often does when fired out of a high-velocity rifle. I don't know exactly what I was thinking when I got up here, but I got a good feeling about this. Man, this 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 Charles is a master strategist. I can't figure out what his plan is because it seems so random and incoherent. I need to be on my guard. Here, I'm gonna put this bullet in the witch's mouth. There you go. I don't want to do this. 
Yeah, shut up. Alright. Alright, go ahead and take your stupid rifle. I'm gonna squeeze my hand. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hurt your son, but it's it's not gonna do anything. Will, Eventually, don't, it'll don't just... listen to him. I mean, we just have this tug of war for Will's soul for like 30 pages. Yes. And then... <laughs> And then uh, eventually, I, I just I fire, and the witch goes down. She is shot. She is shot. A woman has died in front of this entire crowd. They're gasping. I'm She's losing fainted. them. She's fainted. I, do you guys want to hear my type five? No, no, uh, no. Uh, it's okay. She's fine. She's she fainted. Yeah, she fainted. Uh, everyone, go home. No one call the police. Lights turn up. Lights go. Lights. And and actually, Will's father tells the witch, I've carved my smile into that bullet. And I guess she swallowed it in surprise when he fires the rifle? Question mark? Will's dad has a number of theories about what the punishments mean, what the carnival does, and how to beat them. And I feel like most of them sound wrong, but go yeah. ahead. And he even admits most of them are probably wrong. He says, half of what we assume is probably wrong. He says that. And it's one of those writer moments where it's like, if you point it out, nobody else can it's point a, it's it out. It's a lampshade, yeah. Yeah. I got there first. Na 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 na. So, it, you know, it's whatever. It, look, it's the action movie. It's whatever works for the scene right now. So, yeah, the witch is dead. The balloon is dead. God damn it, we need Mr. Cougar out here. So while you go to rescue Jim, I'm going to go get the carnies to go put Mr. Cougar on that merry-go-round. The carousel, if you would. <laughs> and then uh, we're, we're running through the mirror maze. And uh, I, Mr. Holloway, I'm like, oh, no, I knew the mirror maze would tempt me with my age. But I didn't know it would tempt me this much with my age. <laughs> And I'm struggling yeah. as I, l I, I look at pictures of older and older versions of myself. And I'm I like, no. I completely unprepared. <laughs> Who could have seen this coming? <laughs> <laughs> but eventually, uh, Will, Will convinces me that, you know what? I'm not that old. I love you, though, no matter how old you are, Dad. Who earlier we sat down in the library and you told me a little bit about your life because we didn't know each other at all. I love you, Dad. And I laugh. I laugh with glee. And the mirrors shatter. And then we make our way to where Jim should be, but Jim is gone. <gasps> he's entranced. And he's... I guess I guess they, they make their way outside. And the, the carnies, they're, they're not attacking. They're afraid. They're, they're also they're also carrying them. a very old skeletal man. Yeah, who just bursts into dust. The the cougar subplot doesn't go anywhere. They 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 drop him. I think because Jim startles them, they drop him and he turns into dust. And it, a little bit of his dust gets into like Will and his father's mouths, and it gets in their hair. It's kind of gross when you think about it. But like, yeah, he's Mr. Cougar. Uh, he's dead. He, he didn't go anywhere. What do you think about it? We're all just breathing air that's been in somebody else's mouth. That's pretty hot, actually. You want to go camping? So much. <laughs> so, so then Jim gets on the carousel and, okay, okay, you're going to have to help me out here. He, he like, reaches one hand out to Will. Oh, my God. Because, like, yeah. Will, save me, right? Okay, and so Will this is... Will misses him. <laughs> This is the longest description of somebody <laughs> reaching for a pole in literary history. Yeah, it went on a long time. And the, at, at some point I was like, wait, hold on. We're still doing this? Yeah, <laughs> this is yeah. Still he's, happening? he's trying to make it very dramatic because this is the climax. Like, this is what it's been building up to. Can Jim and Will, can Will save Jim is basically what it's been building up to. And Jim, long story short, Look, long story short. Yes. <laughs> Jim gets on the carousel. Carousel starts going around. Will's trying to pull him off the carousel. Jim accidentally pulls Will onto the carousel. They go around for about half a turn. I mean, this is like anime fight scene narration <laughs> time dilation here. The carousel it, it has took gone. 10 episodes for this yeah. to finally happen. Yeah, the carousel has gone about half a year around. They're both about half a year older now. 
and Will finally manages to rip Jim off the carousel and they land on the ground. But Jim is dead. Yeah, that's that's the end of the book. Uh, thank you for thank you for listening to Ray Bradbury's uh, Something Wicked This Way Come. If you if you want to buy us a coffee, uh, but then oh wait what? We find out that uh, there's this little boy that comes up and he's like he's like you got to help me. They're they're trying to get me, Mister. And Will's dad's like uh, Will chest compressions, chest compressions, chest compressions. We can probably salvage this. I'm gonna go find out what this kid wants. And uh, so as Will is sitting there with the life of another child in <laughs> his hands, uh, Will's dad goes off to talk to this kid, and and the kid's like, "They're coming! They're they're coming after me, man!" And he's like, "Are they? Are they?" And he slaps him across the face, and then he rips his shirt off, and it's yeah. just covered with tattoos. And it's the illustrated man. He de-aged himself to try to trick Will's dad. And first, Will's first like, he, asked him, he asked him what his name was, and then, yeah, he, he just rips his shirt off. That's yeah. what Will's dad does now. He's yeah. just ripping shirt off children left and right. Yeah, and uh, it's the illustrated man, fortunately. Otherwise, Will's dad's going to jail. <laughs> and- <laughs> well, it's the 1930s. You could probably get away with that. It's the illustrated man, and Will's dad g- kills him somehow. Kills him by hugging him. He's like, "Let yeah. me oh, show yeah. you the love your parents never showed you." Come he here. Hu- yeah, he hugs him, and then he dies. Okay, so Will is sitting there. Jim is not responding to CPR, and uh, Will is just watching uh, another another human being die in front Start of him. Laughing, Will. Will, you gotta <laughs> laugh. You gotta no. laugh at your friend dying. It's the only way to bring him back. Oh jeez, oh jeez, Dad. Come on, I don't, I don't. Will, 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 <laughs> Morty, Will. You gotta laugh. You gotta laugh, Will. It's the only way. You, you gotta oh, laugh boy. here. Put this lightning rod up your butt, all the way up there, Will. <laughs> oh, that, that's kind of funny because butt butts are funny. Uh, <laughs> oh man, yeah. Keep keep laughing. It's the only way to bring back uh, uh, your your friend. Jim. Oh, oh jeez, Jim. <laughs> Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> and then Jim coughs. He, he he starts coming around, and they sing all the all the greatest hits in the American public domain. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> oh God! It was it was it was a nightmare. It was a nightmare to read. I wasn't even hearing the songs, and it was still a nightmare to read. Like like someone's in the kitchen with Dinah, and. Uh, Yankee Doodle Dandy or some shit. I don't know. I don't know all the song. <laughs> it was awful. That's all you need to know. It was pretty. It was pretty terrible. It was real. It was real bad, guys. It was real bad. <laughs> Someone's in the kitchen with Tina, and and then they they run home, and yeah. and they weren't sure if the if the boys slowed down or if Will's dad found a, a sudden burst of adrenaline as his crippled hand (laughs) (laughs) bounced at his side but (laughs) they ran together at the same pace and they made it all the way home and his dad had to find a hand surgeon specialist (laughs) the next day uh, he takes some aspirin and it's all better i don't know you just wrap it in some bandages (laughs) yeah you you rub some dirt in it walk it off (laughs) it's the 30s be a man quit being a pussy (laughs) <laughs> and that's the end i think i think that is the end yes yeah the carnival's gone forever oh they do smash the shit out of the carousel though they, they were they were pretty specific on that they're like okay i think we've had enough laughter i think we can uh give ourselves a good <laughs> give ourselves a good cry uh try to process the trauma <laughs> we've all gone through now and uh everybody everybody uh take it out on this this carousel uh here's a wrench uh, just beat beat it until you don't feel feelings anymore i think at one point they said we need to just burn this carnival to the ground and will was like but that's against the law and i was like so is murder <laughs> This carnival's killing people, Will. It's it's time to get real. Will, you've killed three people tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, then they all live totally normal lives after this. <laughs> oh no, they don't because they're like, will it will it ever come back? Are they are they gone for good? And Will's dad's like, them, yes. People like them? No. They'll always be evil. Will. There's always going to be some kind of emotional vampire out there. <laughs> I don't bo- know if it'll come in the form of a circus or the form of an animation company grown far beyond its <laughs> its intended. <laughs> 
But one day, Will, there will be others. <laughs> there will be others like them to feast on our souls with their seemingly and they, harmless and they might, entertainment. And they might already be here. And Will and Tim are looking around like, oh, shit. They might even be you, Jim. <laughs> you're kind of you're kind of awful, Jim. You're sucking the life out of us. <laughs> you see, Jim, your <laughs> your your mother's maiden name was Nightshade, but your father's last name was Bezos. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, everything's fine. They're they're just they just gotta be ready the next time it comes so that they can, they'll just murder him again. <laughs> Yeah, this time it'll be easier to, to do it. This time so. it'll be easier because you know what, Jim? You know what the first thing we're doing when we get into town is? We're buying a gun. No <laughs> background check. We're probably buying it at the grocery store because this is the 30s and this is America. And that is your right, <laughs> goddammit. And the next time that balloon comes, you're just going to shoot it with your f***ing gun. <laughs> the end. We all learned a good... A good lesson about Second Amendment rights and how important they are. So, I guess, uh, I guess it's the part of the episode where I say, "Would would you uh, would you recommend yes. something wicked <laughs> this way, comes? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. In spite of all the fun we had with it, I would too. I know you asked me as we were talking, uh, "Is it horror?" And I thought it pretty clearly is a horror story. But did you? think otherwise did you think it was maybe something else what what makes it horror versus uh well i mean yeah i think it is horror but like <laughs> it's so different than say uzumaki <laughs> oh yeah well it's like horror is a big tent yeah and those are both so different than like jason x <laughs> it's a feeling of of dread i would say that that makes it horror. They're like the whole time you are dreading this carnival, they are supernatural. It, it is a discussion of good versus evil, where it it really does seem like evil permeates more than good. I think in an adventure story, it's a lot more hopeful. But with this, there was a very dark tone, and right up until the end, you didn't really know if all the characters were going to make the right decision. And so, yeah, I think it's a it's a solid. Solid horror story. It's probably on the lighter side of horror. It's not. It's not very violent. There's not a lot of gore. They didn't have an out of place sexual assault. Yeah, it's not. I wouldn't say it's scary, but it is horror. So if you're somebody who doesn't like horror, you're not super into horror. I think this is probably a good thing to read for the spooky season if you wanna if you wanna participate. It's it's probably not something that's going to give you a lot of nightmares, but you're still going to get that that spooky vibe. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I'd recommend it. Yeah, I think I would recommend it as well. And I'd say it's four four out of five stars for me, probably. I'd I'd agree. The literary prose uh, eventually gets <laughs> so intense that it it starts to detract from what's going on. <laughs> Charles, please stop. Just yeah. No. Okay. I get it. I get it. They're boys. Uh, they're they are. Please, yeah. please stop. <laughs> well, and like then the carousel scene. Like sometimes the descriptions of the action are like, okay, does he get on the carousel or not? <laughs> I, yeah. This is this is beautiful writing, Ray Bradbury. Um, really like it. So, are you saying that this is the uh, better written scene of the fold where <laughs> where the, I would the dynamite? Not compare th- <laughs> It's coming in and out of reality. I, I no, I would not. I would not. It's not that bad. It's at least well written. He's he's just hitting the symbolism. Oh, sorry. You hit that symbolism too just now. Yeah. Pretty pretty hard. He's just hitting the symbolism a little, a little too hard. And like I said, the theme of longing for one's youth i mean i don't know maybe i'm just not old enough to be there yet but i'm 33 so i think i'd relate to this at least a little i don't miss being a kid and i don't really understand i mean i understand it but i I just don't feel it myself so i don't think the theme is necessarily as universal but ben but ben (laughs) don't you remember the 1980s 
No, I was two. <laughs> don't, don't you remember? The 1990s. Kind of. Everything seemed brighter. Going and going and playing stickball down by the creek, but not in the creek, because we I don't learned our know lesson over 60 what years. What stickball is? Is it baseball, <laughs> but with a stick? And, and don't, don't you remember Hey Arnold? I do remember Hey Arnold. Don't you remember walking home from school several city blocks in New York no. City? I remember. <laughs> I rode a bus. <laughs> I actually did walk to and from school, but the school was like three blocks away. I lived nowhere near another child. <laughs> Damn. Um, Except for I, that boy that was in the well that keep whisper, <laughs> kept whispering secrets to you. <laughs> kept whispering secrets to me. Just, just, just burn them. Burn them all. <laughs> But I don't want to. I'd, I'd get in trouble if I burned them. No, no, no. You just need to burn more. Burn what inhibits you. Burn it all away. Look in the mirror. Look in the fucking mirror. Anyway, I don't really have anything else, do you? No. No, I don't. Um, next week, uh, I don't know what we're doing, because you haven't told me yet. We're doing some more of Ben's Horror Bullshit Month. For well, I think I did tell you. So I have, I have a thing I'm doing next week. I will tell you right now. So I have often said that I think horror really shines in the short story format. If, if you're into books and you're into writing, especially, you probably know this. There are literary fiction magazines that publish short stories. And there are a number of horror magazines that publish short horror stories. So I have gone out and grabbed a couple of magazines that are currently publishing, currently accepting submissions for short stories. And I've read a bunch of them to try to get like the vibe of what kind of story they publish and whether or not I think uh, you should read it and, and what kind of audience I think fits, fits which magazine the best. So I'm going to talk about short horror fiction magazines next time. I will come up with a better title for the episode, but I think it'll be interesting. Ben's short story horror bullshit. Yeah. I'll send them along to you if you want to read them. Yeah, uh, you sent me one, and it looked like it was just erotica, so... I I have been on something <laughs> of an adventure. <laughs> the, the tone of these magazines varies wildly, yes. But uh, it'll be it'll be interesting. It'll be, All I right. think, a nice way to end, end out the month. Is that, for, is that two weeks in a row? Because uh, we still got a week, October 31st itself. October 31st itself, I have another plan that I'm not going to tell you about. Oh my god. Ben's secret horror bullshit. That's what I'm gonna... It's going to be it's going to be scary. Oh my god. It's going to be scary for you. Oh my god, it's it's going to be Atlas Shrugged. We're going to have to read all of Atlas Shrugged in a week. Don't pretend you don't have a crush on Ayn Rand. She's a very unattractive woman. That she is. Anyway, you can find <laughs> us on Twitter at WABpod. Check out the blog for some of these short story reviews featuring short stories from those magazines at blog.worriesaboutbooks.ninja. Buy us a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash WABpod. Watch us on Twitch at twitch.tv slash words about books. Uh, streaming every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And don't forget, we're going to have a special horror one, right? To be scheduled. Yeah. I don't know so when that's coming keep, out. Keep your ears open for that shit. Check Twitter. That's the best way to keep up with that. Yeah. All right. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to I'm going to go camping. I'll I'll see you there. Yeah, buddy. We can just be boys. Just be boys. Just 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 me and the boys. I'm we're going to keep running and running. We're going to run so far. Our lithe young muscles tensed. Against the coming onslaught of age. Bye. Magic, invisible needle and thread to sew their eyes shut, their ears shut. Can you hear me? And their mouths shut. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Which isn't creepy at all. And then he's like, "All right, Dust Witch, I'm I'm a Bond villain." Charles Holloway, well, he's not quite James Bond, but he's the closest thing we've got. A few moments later. La la la. And she also starts crying like a bitch. One eternity later. She runs away. How's that, Ben?
Oh no, Ben. I've been talking this whole time and you can't seem to hear me. Oh no. Hold on. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> I think there's a break in my wire or something, and it was positioned in a weird way, so I couldn't hear you. Yeah. <laughs> I just kept talking. I, know. <laughs> I was like huh really uh really quiet i bet there's something wrong actually <laughs> yeah i was i was what like were you saying oh i was saying like i wanted to take a break and do like a skit and then like all oh this stuff okay and... what, let's do a skit i think it's I, I don't know it might be too late now we can put it in i didn't hear anything that you said let's do this who am 